Welcome to worship this evening. Man, y'all are anticipating and, and, and knowing. I'm going to start off by reading our theme. Good, good evening, good evening. Our theme verse again. Um, and I want to go ahead and push. I want to take it to, uh, I guess, to that path. And theme verse, um, Matthew seven twenty four, and this is where building on the rock comes from. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, and the words of mine is Matthew 5, 6, and 7, right up to this point, the Sermon on the Mount. It's like the wise one who builds their house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. And that foundation that doesn't shake no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter what's going on in the world, is putting into practice what it is that, um, that Jesus teaches us about. So um, I'm going to invite you, if you uh, haven't already, to bring something forward and I uh, love it that you already put your phones there. If you have a phone, bring it up. If not, I invite you to grab one of the cards that's on the uh, seat and just bring those forward. And if y'all would turn and greet our Facebook folks, we're glad that you're here too. And I want to invite you <clears throat> maybe to put something, uh, put your phone away, put it on silence or something, or take it to another room. Uh, do something. This is a, um, a, a physical thing of actually moving and doing something to lessen the distractions that you have. So uh, there's nothing wrong with phones, but uh, they can be a distraction and probably one of our primary distractions. So um, that's kind of why we do that. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time. We give you thanks for your word. We give you thanks for your love of us. And we give you thanks for an opportunity to offer ourselves to you and to pay particular attention to your word in our lives. Bless this time that it might nourish your people here and uh, everywhere. We ask it in Christ's name and all God's people said, amen. So there is a path, <clears throat> and that path is designed to be um, a blessing to us. But you don't have to take the path. And if you don't take the path, as lots of folks don't, um, you can still make headway in life, but it is dangerous and um, things oftentimes don't go very well. That was, there's the tree from, from last time. Just a constant reminder that we tend to focus on the fruit, the things that the tree produces, even like the Ten Commandments and other things we um, say, I haven't stolen, I haven't... Uh, done all the other things that the Ten Commandments talk about, and so I've done everything that needs to be done, but Jesus calls us to, to pay attention to the trunk of the tree that produces that fruit, and, uh, and that's a, a difficult thing. So uh, we're using the study guide, and the study guide, uh, really on Tuesday's day, if you have the study guide, and the focus is out of 1 Corinthians, um, we talked Sunday about Joseph's story uh, of dealing with temptation. And if you don't know the story, if you don't remember the story, Joseph uh, is the number one person in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar's wife wants him to have an inappropriate relationship, and she keeps uh, asking and asking, and he does two things in that story to avoid temptation. And one is to avoid her, avoid the temptation, and the second one was to flee. Uh, there was a time when she grabbed a hold of his coat and wanted to kind of force herself on him, and he ran and left his cloak there. And um, So two good things when you're tempted uh, to flee or to avoid. And I have here things that for me are uh, somewhat tempting and some are not particularly tempting but I do eat them all, just, just a food analogy. So if I want a snack, 
Um, I often eat cashews. Um, I like this nut better than, than any nut, but I don't mind if you eat all the cashews in the world and there's still some for me. You and I would never fight over cashews. Uh, this is a, a Nature Valley Crunch Bar. This is another snack that I, I use, um, and I particularly like it, but um, it's not something that I'm um, ever going to fight about. Here is broccoli. How many of y'all like broccoli? I like it mostly with cheesy bacon sauce, like a nice warm dip, uh, almost like uh, queso, and, but it's cheesy and, and bacony, but uh, I'm never tempted by broccoli. I, I, I'm okay with it. I like it. I'll eat it. Even if it's on a buffet or somewhere, or if it's on a table at Thanksgiving or something, I'll, I'll eat some. But I'm not tempted at all by, by broccoli. Um, but, oh, but these, these are golden double stuff Oreos. Have y'all had golden Oreos? Anybody here not had golden Oreos? Have you ever, you never had them? You don't want to? Well, I'm glad because I'm tempted by these in a huge way and um, I would get uh, mean or ugly. And this was a full thing of golden double stuff Oreos. And I don't know where the others have gone particularly, but, but they're, not, they're not fully there. Just, just an analogy of temptation. I, my sense is nobody's completely the same. We might share temptations of food or, uh, or other things. God encourages us, challenges us um, to overcome temptation. I'm turning over to chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians. I mentioned this in worship on Sunday. And Paul talks about the Old Testament lessons and saying that they're designed to be things that would help warn us and prepare us for life, and then talks about temptation. says, no temptation has come upon you except that which is common to everyone. Now, that doesn't mean we all have the same temptations, but we all have temptations. And God is faithful. God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you're tempted... God will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under that temptation. And I mentioned on Sunday that the way out of that temptation that God provides me with these is not removing that temptation from me. But those two things that Joseph focused on of avoiding these, so hiding them and keeping them out of sight is helpful for me, or actually fleeing and, and removing myself from their presence. So I would like, except I really like them, I, I would rather the temptation that, that draws me be something that just poof goes away so that I don't have the temptation. But that's not the promise. The promise is that God will help us find a way, and it could be avoiding something, it could be running away from it. Um, so I'm particularly uh, uh, want to ask you to think and will pray about what temptations um, are heavy for you. Um, some temptations, I think, that I want to offer up besides food that I think are common in Christian culture and maybe even in our world, one of those is uh, people-pleasing. There's a temptation to focus on pleasing other people, and that's rather than focusing on what God calls me to be and do. And pleasing people is a fine and a good thing, but if we're focused on pleasing people rather than on pleasing God, we'll find ourselves in a bad situation. I can think of uh, many times when people have uh, hurt themselves and hurt others because what was driving them, what was tempting them, was to do whatever was necessary in order for somebody to be happy with them. And that is an incredibly destructive sort of thing if we're holding that uh, primarily as a temptation. Uh, another temptation is to think that my value or my worth depends upon the things that are so common in our world, such as how I look, how well I do, maybe in school or job, um, what I have, all of those different things uh, we tend to um, 
to give too much to, and we're tempted to live our lives that way. Um, and another one is to be like others uh, rather than to be like God. That we see people that we admire, and that's not a bad thing, uh, to see qualities in people that you admire and to say, I would like to, to be more and more like that. But what God created us for is to primarily say that about Jesus and would love um, for that to be one of our habits, that I want to be like Jesus and struggle with the times when that seems like <laughs> there's no way I want to be like Jesus. Uh, I don't want to be crucified or um, all of those sorts of things. But um, So we'll do what we normally do. I'll invite you to a time of, of prayer. You can pray where you are. You can certainly come up and pray. We'll do it for five minutes. Uh, five minutes can seem like an eternity, can it? An eternity without the distraction of the phone or just being silent. Um, and, and yet, if you develop that pattern in your life, um, God will lead you to where five minutes isn't enough and you want more. Uh, kind of like, I want more of those cookies. Um, God will help move that temptation to a different place. So, um, so for prayer time... Just be thinking about what temptations are largest for you. And I want to invite you to offer that to God and to say, God, I know I have this temptation, and I'm asking you to help me with that temptation. Um, how can I overcome it? How can I move through it? What wisdom and insight would you give me? So I invite you to that time of prayer, and I'll close this at the end with the Lord's Prayer, and, and we'll go on. So let us be in an attitude of prayer. Come forward if you desire.
developing a relationship of any kind requires time and um, interaction. And one of the primary ways that we develop that with God is, is um, not just doing things, but making time in our lives just for that relationship. And silence, such as five minutes in worship or in other places, is one of the primary ways that, um, that Christians have uh, fed that and helped establish that and, and blossom that. And that just has incredible benefits and blessings. So um, it might be one of your temptations as well to uh, fight against silence and downtime, and, uh, but we fight against how God created us and how God created the world. So just encourage you to just be thinking about that and, uh, and how much of that and how you would do that, not just these days, but really throughout your life. So. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, and and then we'll depart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Say goodbye to the Facebook folk. We'll see you all next time, and have a wonderful evening. If anybody wants some broccoli, it's right here for you. Oreos have been sneezed on, but... No, if anybody wants an Oreo, you come up and get an Oreo, too. Or cashews, or somebody wants to break into that. Oh, you sure? Anyone? 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 I really haven't sneezed on him.